Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module, we're going to focus on genitourinary ultrasound. So what are the goals of bedside GU ultrasound for the emergency physician? Well, first of all, we're going to inspect closely the kidney, looking for hydronephrosis. We may also be able to see kidney stones, as stones lodge within the parenchyma of the kidney or at the ureteropelvic junction. We should also include imaging of the bladder with our GU ultrasound, and we can look for bladder stones, stones that have migrated from the kidney down to the UVJ, and also get a sense of bladder size. Hopefully, through this module, we can look at bedside ultrasound as an alternative, non-CAT scan-based strategy for the management of uncomplicated kidney stones without the associated dose of radiation. Let's now review how to perform the renal ultrasound examination. As shown in the pictorial to the right, we want to come in with the probe in a long axis configuration with the marker dot superior towards the patient's head. It's good to use a smaller footprint probe that can easily sit between the ribs. For the left kidney scan, we're going to come in from a more posterior position as the spleen offers less of an acoustic window onto the kidney than on the right side where we have the liver which offers a great acoustic window onto the kidney. For the left side, we want to put the patient in the right lateral decubitus position with the left side up so we can come in from that posterior position and image the kidney. On the right side, we can come in from a little bit more anterior using the liver as our acoustic window onto the kidney. But it's also a good idea to put the patient in the left lateral decubitus position with the right side up so that we can angle the probe and get good views of the kidney from the right side. Here's an illustration of the kidney that's important for bedside ultrasound of this structure. Recall the outer area of the kidney, the cortex, and interior to the outer cortex, we see the medulla. Notice several renal pyramids located within the medullary area, and recall that the loops of Henle are going to be oriented inside the renal pyramids. Now the renal pyramids will be filtering the blood and producing urine, which will flow into the calocele area interior of the kidney. We can see here that the small areas of the calyces come together to make the renal pelvis. Now the renal pelvis in turn will continue on as the ureter inferiorly into the bladder. Now a classic appearance of the interior of the kidney is that it has a bright or hyperechoic appearance on bedside sonography, and this is because of the abundance of fat within the renal sinuses. Here's a typical normal kidney on bedside ultrasound. I have the probe marker oriented towards the patient's head, so superior pole of the kidney is to the left, inferior to the right. We see the outer cortex, that outer rim of kidney, to the peripheral aspect, and we see just interior to the cortex, the medullary pyramids. Notice that they have a little bit of a darker or hypochoic signature due to the presence of fluid within the medullary pyramids. We see the inner part of the kidney, the calocele region, and notice that it has a hyperechoic or bright appearance on bedside sonography due to fat within the renal sinuses. Now let's take a look at a picture showing the grading of hydronephrosis from normal kidney to the left to a severe hydronephrosis kidney to the right. What we see in the normal kidney is a normal architecture with the medullary pyramids draining the urine into the calyces and then out into the ureter. Now, if a kidney stone or other obstruction-type pattern had occurred, we can see that the hydronephrosis would be manifested by increasing ballooning out of fluid within the calocele region of the interior part of the kidney. We can also see dilatation of the ureter. Notice in the moderate-type picture here to the right, we can see ballooning out of the medullary pyramids in addition to the calyces. In a worst-case scenario, in the severe hydronephrosis, the entire inner part of the kidney is shelled out by fluid, and all that's left is a little rim of the outer cortex around all the fluid within the hydronephrotic kidney. Let's begin by taking a look at a patient who presented with a very small kidney stone and grade 1 hydronephrosis. Superior pole to the left, inferior pole of the kidney to the right. As we scan back and forth through the kidney, we note multiple little dark areas within the interior of the kidney. These could be construed as cysts. However, as we scan up and down through the kidney, we can see that they all coalesce to form dilated calyces. The signature of a grade 1 hydronephrosis with mild swelling of the interior of the kidney. But it's very important to fan anterior posterior through the kidney to see that all of these areas of hydronephrosis coalesce into the calocele region. Here's an example of a more advanced degree of hydronephrosis known as moderate or grade 2 hydronephrosis. 
And what we see here is that the interior of the kidney, the caliceal region, is filled with dark or anechoic fluid. We can also see that the medullary pyramids are more pronounced due to the coalescence of fluid going up from the caliceal region into the medullary pyramids. And if we look closely, we can see the beginning of hydroureter, the arching away of the ureter coming down inferiorly away from the caliceal region. So a more pronounced degree of hydronephrosis on the spectrum of disease seen within the kidney due to a larger kidney stone. Here's a kidney from another patient with a larger kidney stone representing a grade 2 to 3 or moderate to severe hydronephrosis. And again we see the dilated caliceal region filled with fluid. And in this video clip we see well the hydroureter, the dilated ureter, arching inferiorly away from the kidney down towards the patient's bladder. Here's an example of the highest grade hydronephrosis, severe or grade 3 hydronephrosis in a patient who had a 1.5 centimeter kidney stone. And as we look through the kidney, scanning back and forth, we can see that the, all the medullary pyramids and the caliceal region is completely filled with dark or anechoic fluid. All that's left here is the outer cortex of renal tissue. So unfortunately, this was a patient who had a long-standing hydronephrosis and who had lost a lot of the kidney function on this side. As we still the image down, we can see that the dilated caliceal region leads to a very dilated hydroureter, again confirming hydronephrosis. When evaluating a patient with a possible kidney stone, when you find hydronephrosis, you should also look at the bladder, and you may be able to visualize a stone present at the left or right ureterovesicular junction. Here's a case in which a patient presented with right flank pain and had right hydronephrosis. We're looking at the bladder in a, in a short axis configuration with a marker dot over towards the patient's right side. What we can see is a hyperechoic large shadowing stone present at the right UVJ. If we apply Doppler sonography there, we can see that the ureteral jets, the flow of urine coming out through the UVJ into the bladder, is being blocked by this one centimeter stone that's plugged at the UVJ. So in fact, this patient had to go to the cystoscopy lab to get the large stone removed and relieving the obstruction of urine into the bladder. In conclusion, thanks for joining me for the Sound Bites module focusing on genitourinary ultrasound. Our goals, goal number one, hopefully now you know how to perform ultrasound of the kidney and diagnose hydronephrosis from mild or grade one through moderate to severe or grade three. Our second goal is to investigate the bladder closely, and we may be able to see stones that have migrated down to the UVJ on inspection of the bladder. We can also get a sense of bladder size on bladder sonography, and using Doppler we can look at the ureteral jets. Our overriding goal for this module is to use ultrasound to diagnose kidney stones in a selected group of patients as an alternative to CAT scanning. So I hope to see you back in the future as Sano Access continues.